Hello, Goranges are on sale, this time on view for our sale on the 5th of July, into July now, Wimbledon, football's going through and all that sort of stuff. And we've just had a big fine sale. Uh, this sale was set up just ahead of it and there's a really interesting mixture as ever of things to show you. Uh, so I'm standing here amongst the smalls, we haven't quite tidied up as usual because the viewing's not for a couple of days time. But what do I see here? Well, this catches my immediately lot 627. Nice little Victorian watercolour botanical study with the butterfly. The butterfly is, is cut out from a separate piece of paper for whatever reason. Perhaps it's a later embellishment. Perhaps it was just to give it some sort of three-dimensional aspect. Anyway, lot 627, in at 100 to 150. Sort of quite a pleasant thing there. Uh, and alongside it, some sort of Newlin copper wares. Now, Newlin, we know it's Newlin because it's stamped Newlin. Cunning little things like that that us auctioneers know. Um, and the man is Pearson, who was the, the new Lynn Copper decorator and artist. Um, but this isn't necessarily Pearson, probably not at all. He did tend to monogram his pieces. But it's very much in that manner and with the fish around it, probably around about 1910 or so. So you get that bowl, you get a pair of spill vases, really. I know they look like sort of giant candlesticks, but I think spill vases is, is what we say those are. They have little tin liners and a girt whopping sort of pot there with the fleur de lis. So four items in the lot, lot 275, estimate 150 to 200, seems about right to me. Seeing some more croft down here, I'm seeing lot 265, Enzo Plazotta sculpture, bronze artist. These are works in bronze, but sort of modest sizes. Um, I guess this is, um, well, it says what it is around the bottom. Well, it actually says Spirit of Rebellion, but um, it's a sort of David and Goliath kind of thing, isn't it? There, And then the other one with it um, does not have a title, but you get two in the lot there, bronzes, by Plazotta, estimate two to three hundred pounds. Carrying on down, see a little bit of Zolne here. Now, Zolne, Hungarian factory. There's the mark showing under there. It's a sort of pointy castle type thing in the middle. Uh, Zolne made uh, rather jazzy, sort of pierced, bright floral colours on beige ground was their thing back in the day. And then following that, they got more into these sort of high iridescent colours. Um, so not big money, 50 to 70 pounds, lot 258. Oh, I also saw along here, this William Logsdale painting. An original oil on canvas. We got it, there we are. Mm -hmm. Original oil on canvas. It's the docks at Antwerp. We have a look at the back, because we always look at the back to see what's going on. Nice original canvas. Christie's had it at one time. They put their stencil on it up there. You can't find out anymore. You phone them up, they won't tell you. They used to, but they're too busy now. And um, why should they share their privileged information? Anyway, we've got the title up here on old label. Nice original untouched thing. Bit of stretcher mark showing, perhaps a little dirty, but still well painted. Estimate three to five hundred pounds. That's lot six, two, three. Carrying on down. What can we find? Let's have a rummage behind the silver. It's been hidden at the moment. It won't be in due course. Let's see if anything in particular catches my eye. Well, there's a nice basket here. Where are we? Are we here? By the sandwich bag. Let's move that just across there. There we are, lot 727. George III, silver, swing handle basket, pierced around the edge, bright cut decoration, coat of arms engraved to it. And a uh, nice thing really, all round. Estimate five to seven hundred. Hallmarks are on the back, showing here. If you'd like to see those, there we go. So, all round, not a bad thing. Five to seven hundred pounds, lot seven two seven. Otherwise, there's lots of other silver behind here, a mixture, quite a lot of mustard pots for some reason. Roger's fancy making mustard pots this week, I'm mixing things. And uh, then we've got some snuff bottles and we have a, a run of those. They don't look particularly fine, but they are in quantity, should you like quantities of snuff bottles. And generally in amongst them, people find things to be interested in. Pocket watches, again, from an estate we've been dealing with. That's one lot, lot 780, large sort of quantity of mix, some are silver, some are white metal, others are base metal. A lot of this sort of Hebdomas type where you have the visible escapement of varying age, condition and quality. But overall, these have been going rather well. There's a Hewer stopwatch in there. People like those timepieces. Um, so yeah, good mixture there. Some of these lots have been taking off and flying, making sort of multiple estimate results. So uh, that's what we like to see. I'm seeing some dolls up on top. Let's have a look here, 488. Little big shoulder doll there. 
in a period dress, bisque arms, 50 to 80 estimate, look, 488. Further on, well, the dancing figures are still here, they didn't get away, but there's a nice bit of cold painted bronze, if you like cats. Why wouldn't you? A cold painted bronze kitten, and it doesn't have any sort of marks to show, but it's definitely Austrian. It'll be round about 1900 in date. That's not 481. Sensible estimate there of 60 to 80 pounds. Should be 100 or so. But 481, so that's quite nice. So there's a little rummage behind the back. Got to look around that way now. Comes around. And what can I see here? It's, it's as new to me as it is to you. So looking along here, I'm seeing silver photograph frames. Chinese vases converted into lamps, mixed lots of booze, uh, a number of Graham Clark uh, prints, limited edition prints are in the set. I'll land on one in due course. Uh, not a bad clock there, Victorian. Gabrielle of Bishopsgate Street within, in London. Uh, I would say this is sort of late-ish 19th century. Dahl is all original, hasn't been mucked about with, a bit rubbed. Lot 384, 150 to 200 estimate. Peeking inside, it's got its original single fusée movement. Doesn't appear to have a pendulum, so you've got to track one down, which is a bit tedious, but it's not too hard to find someone who can supply you with one. Lot 384, stick it on the kitchen wall. Uh, otherwise, here, this is quite nice as too. Lot 382. Look at that. That's um, this is very heavy. It's it's ormolu, so it's we know this because I taught you last week. It's gilt bronze. <laughs> Are you filming yourself? Yes. Hey, there we go. We see the camera lady at last. And um, about to say she's got clothes on today, but there we go, I won't say that. Uh, so there we are, nice, gilt bronze uh, with the ram's head. Um, I don't think there's any satanic connection to it, but it's, it's quite fun that, isn't it? Lot 382, nice original finish to it. Keep your eye on that one, see how it goes. Then we've got Cantonese vases, we've got Berlin needlework panels. We have a nice sort of fire guard here. So sort of Edwardian or thereabouts, with some firearms, just an estimate 40 to 60 pounds. It's all about whether you've got the right size fireplace for it, but that's a nice example if you have got room for it. Coming across this way, I'm seeing some runs of bindings, telephone, no one there, uh, mixed silver plate, more silver plate, banjos, Staffordshire chimney dogs, they don't sell for much at all, I'm afraid, as neither do dog and character jugs. Back in the day, they would have been sold in lots of two or three. Things have changed. It's quite nice, David Birch here, lot 554. The uh, landscape there with windmill now, it's got a title on the back from memory. It's written it upside down just to test me. Blue and Gold Norfolk is the title, and it's in original condition, meaning. Perhaps a little bit of light scuffing, there's scratching up there, nothing too serious. Original frame, and again we go and look at the back, don't we? Always look at the back, because it tells us these. So I'm turning it upside down, just because I saw before that it had been put back in its frame the wrong way out. We've got an RI label, there's an exhibition label for it. The artist title on here. He may of course have reused the frame from something else, which perhaps is suggested with this, it looks like a different title on it. Um, but definitely David Birch. So he exhibited something else and then he reused the frame for another work. But um, there we go, some nice original stuff on the back there. That is lot 554 with modest estimates, 60 to 80 pounds. So I think if you bought it for that, it'd be very good value. It's a good looking thing. So there we go, good selection of smalls. Graham Clarks, I did touch on them, but haven't sort of landed on any more, but they are scattered about. Here's a lot here, lot 552. Um, kettle watching, picnickers there. That comes with some others, um, the Hamilton Lady and others. There's six in the lot there, lot 552, but other lots are in the sale of Graham Clark's, sort of larger works and some of his folios as well. So good mixture there, good mixture all the way through the smalls. We will go and have a look in the warehouse. So here we are, reclining in the warehouse, sitting back comfortably at ease in this fabulous chair. Look at this. This is lot 139, Jacobean style, carved walnut, reclining armchair, because it's going to sort of crank Frank arms at the side are very much in the French tradition. Nicely upholstered though in this sort of faux tapestry style material, which looks great with a cushion. There we are. Our estimate, two to three hundred. Seems very reasonable to me. Probably make a bit more, but we shall see as we always do. I'm gonna put that mirror back where I found it on top and head down the line. So, what have we got? What's an old bed here. Look, panel bed, lot three. Carved oak double bed frame. That's a 
cosy double bed frame, isn't it? Wow. I wonder who decided that was a double bed frame. Someone who doesn't share a bed very often, maybe. I don't know, that's mean perhaps, but there we are. Uh, it's lot three, it's in the 100 to 150, so it's got that sort of old look, but it's not particularly old. It's just got the style of, you know, probably 1920s, 30s. The Bible box there, school desk. I'm going backwards, so you're seeing it before I am. Small sideboard, high cupboard. Hmm. Okay, here yeah, about this one, the upholstered day bed. Look at that, that's got a sort of look to it, hasn't it? Lot 33. So you can stick it at the end of the bed or what have you. A bit of a statement piece, as is this nice big brass bed. Now that's more of a bed for two, I, I'm suggesting. Uh, lot 34, Victorian style, and in at just 150 to 200. Pretty solid though, the, the, the base, the divan base looks fine. You need a mattress for it. Could be perfect for the sort of Airbnbs or anyone like that who wants such a thing. Diamond suites, a better cylinder desk here to some extent. This is a late 19th century French one. And this nice little sort of tambour on the full. Bit of marble up top, little crack in the corner. But overall, fair enough. Rather plain interior, which is not un unusual. Lot 30, estimate three to 500. We'll close it, looks more exciting like that, looks better. Down the end here, good grief. We do get everything in here, don't we? This uh, strange tricycle. Oh, I'd love to ride it, but I can't fit on it, sadly. Lot 67, hasn't got an estimate yet, but uh, there we go, strange cycle. Now, more relevantly, and what we did see go well this week, here's a, um, a trolley, lot 65, brass and uh, sort of foam mahogany by the looks of things. But th these drinks trolleys have been doing really well, and we had one in this week that was in at about 50 quid and made about 500. I'm not saying this one's going to be quite so strong, but uh, still, it's got that sort of look that people want, think sort of mad men and that kind of, style era. Otherwise, what else have we? Well, a chiffonier. No one wants to buy chiffoniers anymore, poor thing. This is quite a nice one. Look, it's rosewood. It's got brass columns to the front with two shelves. Bit faded across the drawer and later lined inside. Nice grills though. Perhaps some new silk. Got a shelf, adjustable. You know, it's all there really. And looks rather smart in the hallway or what have you. So that is lot 64. We'll see how that gets on. Garden furniture as ever, French furniture as ever, Edwardian furniture as ever, an easel, slightly different model here, lot 87, Edwardian adjustable easel, there we are, Berger suite, leg glass bookcase, sort of in the manner of minty by the looks of things, lot 54, 54, they like them with the leg. And then David was very keen on this one, this is lot 93. A Victorian barouche horse cart. So I think the idea, David was telling me, we can blame him if he's wrong, is that it's actually from hitching up, you're not even going to get a Shetland pony on that. That is for hitching up to your Great Dane, or possibly your Irish Wolfhound, and, uh, or I suppose your butler could do it actually if you're that way inclined. And um, <laughs> they can crawl around and towing the, uh, towing the children in it. So an unusual item, apparently a bit of a fashion because Queen Victoria had one and then everybody wanted one. Or so David says. So, and it looks even like you've got mounts there for carriage lamps or maybe a whip if it's uh, we're all heading off in that direction. So uh, anyway, there we are, lot 93. Could come in handy for all sorts of things. Finish off today with some taxidermy. Lot 133, taxidermic bird display. Mm, I'm not sure what we've got, plovers and pipers or something. There we are, a little bit unusual, a little bit um, slightly distressed, should we say, but the estimate is just one to 200 and the taxidermy has been going very well, as evidenced by the taxidermic birds in the fine cell yesterday that made about 7,000 quid, but they were all South American birds in beautiful condition. Anyway, there we go. As ever, good luck for you to look at. On view Friday, Saturday, on the day of the sale. Sale starts Monday at 9.30. Send us emails and requests if you'd like to know more and you're not able to get in. Thank you very much.